Hello student to the course for physics of linear and nonlinear optical waveguide. Today we have basic fiber optics, we are going to start uh, basic uh, understanding of the basic fiber optics. In today's lecture I will try to cover the concept of step index fiber and the method of light guidance in self uh, in, in this kind of uh, step index fiber right. So, today we have lecture 5. So, our topic is understanding of the basic properties of fiber. So, basic optical fiber. So, first we start with the structure of an optical fiber and the structure is precisely like this. We have all have a rough idea about the optical fiber, but still I want to give you an idea. So, optical fiber is a cylindrical kind of structure, geometrically it is a cylindrical structure and this portion have a refractive index N1 and this portion has a refractive index N2 where N1 is greater than N2. This portion is called core. and this portion is called clad. clad. So, the light is eventually, so if I make a cross section, a transverse cross section. I should have a structure like this. This is transverse cross, cross section. So, this is the axis of the fiber. This is a core part having a refractive index N1 and this is a cladding part refractive index into this is also clad with the refractive index into where n1 is greater than n2. So, I can write this thing in this format also I can draw a refractive index profile for this structure as well. So, this is the refractive index profile and you can see along this direction we have the refractive index n which is a function of r where r is a distance from this axis to this direction. So, for step index fiber we have a step like refractive index profile in the core region we have a refractive index n1 and in the cladding region we have a refractive index N2 and this N1 and N2 there is no change in N1 and N2 it is a step like profile. So, mathematically if I want to write the profile, so let me write it more convenient way. So, for step index fiber. in short SIF, I have this is the axis I am having, this is the R, I have a refractive index profile like this. This is 
this is refractive index of the core in one this is refractive index of the cladding in two and outside the cladding we normally have air so this is the refractive index of the air i write in a now if i want to write this mathematically the form of the refractive index mathematically then i need to define the distance from here to here which is the radius of the core i write it as a and then from here to here I write B, this is the radius of the fiber. So, I have a structure like this, this is the core part and over that I have a cladding. This is the axis. So, from here to here up to this it is A and from here to this length this is b well mathematically refractive index in r is n1 when r is this it should be should, it should be less than because at there is a sudden jump in the refractive index this equal to n2 i have and outside the fiber that means when my r is greater than b i have the refractive index of air if the fiber is placed in the air so this is roughly the structure of a standard fiber step index fiber where the refractive index in one is the refractive index of the core which is higher than cladding so the light guidance is whatever we just mentioned in the class last class that if I launch a light here then it sh from this interface I have n1 n2 so n1 is greater than n2 so I have a total internal reflection so the light is guided in this fiber by multiple total internal reflections so here i have a one reflect reflection then i can have another reflection from this point and so on if this is a this is b this is c so multiple uh, uh, multiple total internal reflection can take place and eventually the light is guided through this structure now at this point we know there are uh, rays that is passing through the fiber and it experiences multiple reflections in the core clad boundary and total internal reflection is the basic principle through which light is propagating but there are few rays which are crossing the axis because this axis i am talking about is like that so this is the axis of the fiber so there are few rays which will going to cross the axis but there are certain rays will not going to cross the axis so if i if i draw like this this is the fiber structure the cross section this is the core and this is a clad suppose this is the so i have an axis here and when i launch a light it can cross this axis this is one kind of ray through which and then it takes the total internal reflection every time from this uh, uh, this boundary core and cladding boundary and gradually propagate on the other hand there is a possibility so this is again a fiber structure this is 
this is my axis point an axis is now perpendicular to this plane and there is a possibility that the light will not going to cross these axis it will reflect it like this from here to here here to here every every time it is reflecting but it is not crossing the axis at all when the ray crossing the axis it is called there is a name on that it is called the meridional ray on the other hand if the light it not crossing the axis whatever the axis we have here in the fiber it's called the skew ray in one case it is crossing the axis every time in other case so in this case if i try to draw for meridional ray if i try to draw it is difficult to draw in two dimension so it like it crosses like this so it never never crosses this axis it hits one boundary and then again hits another boundary but without without crossing the axis so this is a special kind of ray it is called the skew ray and also we have a general meridional ray this meridional ray is a ray which is passing through the fiber and every time it crosses this axis point so this is the difference well after having uh, the idea of skew ray and meridional ray then the next important thing that we need to understand is called the numerical aperture and we need to calculate what is the value of the numerical aperture so we will now calculate numerical aperture so what is the value of the acceptance angle that we're going to calculate and this is this calculation is for meridional ray this is for meridional ray so let me draw once again the fiber cross fiber structure cross section so this is my when i calculate a numerical aperture i have to be very careful about the light rays and how it is crossing etc so this is the structure cross section i have a core i have a clad and this is the axis and the light is falling like that here and then here we have the air so refractive index is na in this is cladding so refractive index i have n2 and this is core so refractive index n1 so if i extend this portion like this so this is the length of the fiber along this direction so light is falling like that with an initial angle say i this is the angle at which the light is falling now this is the interface i have a refractive index n1 and refractive index n so some kind of deviation one can expect like this and the light will hit after that going to hit this point some point and if this angle whatever the angle is it is hitting say phi is greater than the critical angle again this boundary we have two boundaries one is n1 and another is n2 n1 is the core part and n2 is the cladding part so if this angle phi is greater than the critical angle we have a total internal reflection at this point now let us consider this angle as theta so 
So you can see that if I increase, so what is the relationship between the angle? If I quickly uh, understand, try to understand, then one equation is readily in our hand that theta plus phi is equal to pi by 2. There is a constant theta plus phi. Now, if I increases, so what happened? Theta will going to uh, increase. If theta is increasing, then phi will going to decrease and there is a possibility at certain phi that the critical it falls lows less than critical angle and if it is fall less than critical angle, so there will be no total in internal reflection from this point. So that means there is a limitation of i and all the rays with that limitation can pass through the fiber in principle can pass through the fiber through total internal reflection phenomena and our now aim is to find out what is the value of that i what is the what is the value of that i and this is called the acceptance angle this is called the acceptance angle so it should it should it should be like a cone through which all the light will pass through so let us quickly find what we have so far so na so first interface with these and what is the relationship between i and theta we quickly find so na sin i snell's law is equal to n1 sin theta again n1 sin theta i can write in terms of phi it is n1 cos of phi because theta plus phi is pi by 2 we just use that so as i mentioned that if i increases if i increases then theta is also increase theta increases then theta increases and phi decreases so i can have a value critical value and at critical value i have na sin ic sin ic is my critical value for which i have n1 cos phi c what is cos phi c cos phi c is the angle here which is the critical angle so if cos phi c is a critical angle i can write n1 sin phi c according to the snell's law is n2 because if this is critical angle then this ray is just about to so at critical angle what happened so let me draw these things here so at critical angle when this angle is phi c the rays will be just passing through this so this angle will be pi by 2 so i can use this relation next i will write down because i know what is my sin phi c sin phi c is equal to n2 divided by n1 so cos phi c is simply 1 minus into square divided by n1 square whole to the power half 
Now I'm going to use this cos phi c here. So n is we have n a sin i c is equal to n1 cos phi c. Cos phi c I derive, so it should be n1 into 1 minus n2 square divided by n1 is square whole to the power half. This is the value I have for n a sin i c. I can put this n1 inside. So, it should be n1 square minus n2 square whole to the power half. So from here I can have sin i c is equal to sin i c is equal to 1 divided by n a n 1 square minus n 2 square whole to the power half. So, this quantity n 1 square minus n 2 square whole to the power half is called numerical aperture. numerical aperture or in short NA. So, sin IC is NA divided by small NA. Mind it this is the refractive index of air if the fiber is placed in the air if it is placed in some other medium so this na value will be changing accordingly but in case of air normally we consider na is equal to 1 for air then this equation simply becomes sin ic equal to n a where n a is a uh, n a is uh, the numerical aperture. So, I c which is the acceptance angle is simply sin inverse n a divided by if I want to put this n a as well then the refractive index of the air which is sin inverse of if I write completely what is the form it should be n1 square minus n2 square divided by n a. So, one can see with this one we can see that the value of the n a which is defined. So, n a is defined as n 1 square minus n 2 square whole to the power half. So, if the refractive index contrast is high, if the refractive index contrast is high, then the acceptance angle then I c will all will also high. So, if I increase the refractive index, so this is the structure of 
the fiber. And from my expression, we find that uh, sin IC is equal to NA. So, if NA increases, then also IC will going to increase because sin function increases. When the argument increases, then these values also are going to increase. So, I have a acceptance angle which basically in 3D which basically forming a cone like structure and this is basically my IC. So, all the rays that will fall here that will fall here will pass through the fiber in principle. And if the refractive index n1 this is n1 and this is n2 n2 then I can increase this value. I can increase IC by increasing Na the refractive index con contrast. So, when we want to gather more and more light we want to pass more and more light on the fiber then if the contrast between the core and cladding is very high then we can increase in principle the acceptance angle. However, in the later part of our course we can see that if I increase the value of in the contrast between n1 and n2 then some other problems will going to appear. One of the major problem is dispersion and that thing we will going to discuss in the, in the future classes. But next class we also calculate the same thing acceptance angle but we will going to calculate the acceptance angle for another kind of ray which is Q ray. Mind it whatever the calculation we did in this particular lecture uh, is for merid meridional ray. So, this is for meridional ray. So, that means every time this this uh, uh, this uh, ray is passing through the axis here it is passing through the axis. So, it is passing through the axis that is why it is called the meridional ray, but in the next class we will going to calculate the numerical aperture for another kind of ray which is called the skew ray and the skew ray will not going to pass through the axis and we will going to see how one can uh, find out and that condition how one can find out the condition for uh, uh, for acceptance angle. So, with this note let me conclude thank you very much for your attention.